Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jensen and welcome to my fly bench. Recently, Tom Rosenbauer made a video entitled Tom's Deadly Dozen Trout Flies. Now, to be clear, he was talking about flies that would work anywhere in the world. And he's traveled extensively fly fishing and he should know. At the filming of that video, he was in South America using these flies to the same good effect that he does back home in the States. And I'm sure they'd be just as useful in Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, anywhere trout are found. In reaction to his film, I wanted to make a video of my deadly dozen trout flies for BC. And that's because BC is such a mecca from fly anglers for around, from around the world. The first three flies on my list are chironomids. Now Tom only dedicated one to midges, but I got to dedicate three and I could, there could have been a lot more. The first on that list is the black and red ice cream cone or tied with certain materials called the Teddy's Chronomid. This is such a basic chronomid for BC that you can't leave it out of your box. It's my number one fly. This chronomid pupa hatches everywhere from Vancouver Island through the mainland, the Thompson Nicola region in the Chilcotin and up into the Peace. It's a must have BC pattern. So make sure you've got Teddy's Chronomid in your box. The second fly, also chronomid, is known as the Chromie. Without this fly, you've got a gaping hole in your fly box. With it, you're going to have a lot of fast action days. It doesn't matter what color rib you put on it, black, red, copper, gold, chartreuse, you name it. It's got to be a chromie. Every chronomid species in BC goes through a chromie stage in its hatch when the gases build up under its skin. You need some chromies in your box in various sizes. Make sure you've got some, you're going to enjoy some fast action. And my third chronomid is the green-red blended chronomid pupa. In the popular fishing months of May, June, and July for travelers from around the world, the green chronomid is very common in most, most of our lakes. You need a red-green blend as that uh, red is the residual hemoglobin that's left over from the bloodworm phase of the larva. Get a red-green blend in there, you'll enjoy great fishing through those uh, warm, warmer summer months. My fourth fly is the BMW or Brian's Marabou Wiggler. Now I tie mine with ostrich hurl because it gives such easy life in the water. It flows and flutters so naturally. I tie it in gray, black, maroon, and green. It's a great little fly. Make sure you got some BMWs. Trout often finish off a feast of chronomids on leeches and it's a great way to extend the action on a day when the hatch is over. My fifth fly is also a nod to Brian Chan, and how can we, there's no way we can leave his flies out of this list. Um, it, this fly is called Brian's Ruby-Eyed Leech. It's a great pattern for ice off or in the late fall when the fish are on the shallows in the shoals searching for a big mouthful. It's also a, a fly that you can cast and strip in and retrieve or hang under an indicator to great effect when there's no specific hatch going on. Make sure you got Brian's Ruby-Eyed Leech in your box, you won't regret it. My sixth fly is an oldie but a goldie, the halfback nymph. Now this little fly doesn't represent any specific insect, but in general it represents many different things. It's often taken as a mayfly, a caddisfly nymph, a dragonfly nymph, a shrimp, or in tiny sizes as a chironomid. It's a great generalist pattern. I've had fantastic days anchored in the shallows, casting this out on an intermediate sink line over the drop-off, and just slowly working it up in short strips. The fish are cruising those drop-offs looking for something to eat and this presents itself and looks a little like everything they eat. So make sure you got some halfbacks in there, you won't regret it. My seventh fly might be controversial to some but I'm saying it anyway, the booby. You gotta have the booby in there. This is a great fly. Ask the Fresky Brothers, ask uh, Brian Chan. Without the booby, you're missing out. Cast over the shallows and the marl bottoms on a short leader and a full sink line, stripped in fast, you get some smashing hard hits. The tequila booby is a must have in BC lakes and I wouldn't leave home without it. Eighth fly agrees with uh, Tom, the woolly bugger. You need a woolly bugger in there. This one's, uh, I like the black with the black uh, crystal chenille body or you can go with the bulldog like the Fresky Brothers. Whatever colors you choose, it's a versatile fly. It be can be cast and retrieved in lakes as a leech, or as a dragonfly nymph, it's also great in the rivers for bull trout and for rainbows there. You need woolly bugger in there, choose your colors and go for it. You're going to have some fun with it. Now Tom had two streamers in his list, 
Uh, the first was the woolly bugger. The second, he had a white rabbit zonker. I'm going with uh, Murray's rolled muddler instead. And why is that? Well, if you're coming to BC, there's a chance that you could be targeting coastal cutthroat trout. They're very uh, aggressive, cannibalistic feeders, whether it's in the lakes, rivers, or on the beaches. And Murray's rolled muddler is a go-to fly for those fish. You gotta have it if you, there's any chance you're going to be chasing cutthroat. In addition, as a bonus, this fly is also extremely effective for lakes that are stocked with the blackwater strain of rainbow trout. Ray, uh, Murray's rolled muddler was, should have a home in your box as it does in mine. And then we're going to go to the scud. We need a scud in our box because freshwater shrimp are such a staple for BC trout in the lakes. Uh, you can be completely lost without it. Uh, various sizes, various colors, it can be tied with a bead or without. But a scud pattern is an absolutely essential fly to have in a BC fly box. Make sure you've got some with or without the beads. Now we move on to the dry flies. My two dry flies start with the deer hair caddis. Now Tom had an elk hair caddis. It really doesn't matter which. Depends on whether you want light hair or dark hair. But both of them float really well. They can be used on rivers and lakes. They're extremely effective, stripped in quickly, skated across the surface when there's a sedge hatch going on. You, you need a dry fly that's bulky and big and floats well and it's easy to see. Deer hair caddis is my choice. And my final choice of dry fly is the Parachute Hackle Blue Dun. Now you can tie this for mayflies. Uh, you, uh, this is my small dry fly. It can be tied from number 18s or 20s up through number 10s. But it's my small choice as paired to the deer hair caddis. If you nip off the tail, it can re represent a chronomid dry fly. If you leave the tail on, it's a mayfly. It's a really great fly. It floats well, easily visible as a parachute hackle and it'll fool trout when they're finicky about dry flies. So there's my deadly dozen trout flies for BC. What do you think? What flies would you substitute in for ones I've put in there? Or how would you build on this list? That's my idea. This is a dozen to start with if you've never been to BC. You want to have these dozen in your box and you can certainly add to it from there. Things that I would add to that might be dragonflies, might be tom thumbs, dock spratlies, or some other attractor patterns. Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll discuss and have a friendly debate about it. I look forward to seeing you all in the water. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.